Yo, what's up guys? Coach KP here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through a workout that you can also do to help you jump higher and build that athleticism that's gonna give you that edge in your sport. So before we get started, you guys already know, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on post notifications, and comment down below if you guys wanna see more of this workout vlog type style videos. Quick kind of background, pretty much my training goal is to obviously improve vertical jump, but with three kids and coaching athletes, you know, and working on my business, it's kind of tough to stay consistent. So I like to be able to, you know, feel fast uh, when I'm doing my speed workouts on the track. I still like to feel a little bit springy and reactive off the floor. You know, with being busy and stuff, I just try to you know, maximize each workout so that I'm improving my athleticism the way I want it. So that's kind of my background and my training goals. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the workout, baby. So right now, all I'm doing is I'm just gonna do a quick foam roller circuit where I'm just going to roll out the side of my leg, right, on my TFL, and um, my hammies, my glutes, my calves, my upper back. This is just a general warm up to help me loosen up, to help me feel good prior to any sort of jumping. So again, I got limited equipment, so I gotta use what I have in the garage. So when I'm doing the foam roller, um, there's not really a set rep. Uh, I kind of just go by maybe 10 to 15 rolls or I like to do it for time where I'm just rolling on a certain area for about 10 to you know 15 seconds. And so this doesn't have to take long. Once I feel good and I feel loose, I then move on to just a general movement warm up where I'm stretching out and activating certain muscle groups that I'm gonna use for jumping. So next up, I like to do some groundwork whether it's a um, Spider-Man lunge. So what I'm doing here is I'm stepping outside of my hand. I'm kind of pushing my knee to the outside edge of my foot. And I'm switching every rep. And so this is helping me loosen up the hips, get a little bit of the shoulder stability from holding this um, somewhat push-up position. And I'm gonna do this for about one to two set, maybe eight to 10 reps per leg. And then after that, I kind of like to get into a little bit of a flow where I'm adding an upper back rotation. Same thing, I'm doing it for eight to 10 reps per side. And this is gonna help warm up not only my lower body, but also my upper body. Because my shoulders are stabilizing. I'm reaching, so I'm getting that good thoracic rotation, right? So it's just a really good trunk activation, shoulder activation, shoulder stability. So a lot of benefit with this type of movement. That's why we call it the world's greatest stress for a reason. In a squat, I like to bring my feet in just a little bit closer, maybe hip width. I'm gonna go as low as I can, use my elbows, to push my knees away from each other. And I like to kind of do the same thing where I'm reaching with each arm behind me, getting that rotation. I do about a few of these and I come up. So push out, rotate, rotate, come up. So next one is pretty much my favorite movement because it, um, because it involves a lot of things at once. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do a single leg hip hinge, right? So I'm working on that single leg stability, hammy stretch, then I come up into a high knee hug, driving my toes up, and I'm gonna step forward, lunge, push out, get my elbow to my ankle, now I'm gonna hike my hips up in the air, back down, and then come back. Do 
lot of jumping today, so I like to start from the ground, work my way up, eventually start moving, and then moving fast. So same progression with speed. I like to go slow, take my time, and eventually ramp it up to something that's quicker. I have a lot of room in the garage, so with the warm up, I like to do things that are bang for your buck, meaning that it's going to warm you up really quick without having to, you know, do a lot of movement, right? Because I like to get right into it. I don't like to waste a lot of energy going into my jump workout. So I'm gonna do this for about five reps. So all I'm focusing on is a fast loading and exploding right up. So after I do a vertical jump, all I'm gonna do now is uh, to mix it up and do a different direction or a lateral jump. Split into a single leg and then jump laterally and then stick with one leg. So now before I go to my actual jump session, I like to do uh, one isometric exercise to help me maximize my jump training. So I'm gonna do a split squat ISO. I'm gonna hold it for about 10 uh, to 15 seconds. I got about a 35 uh, pound uh, dumbbell in each arm. So I'm just gonna start a split, drop down low with about two, three inches off the ground and just hold it for a good 15 seconds. This for about two to three sets, depending on how I feel that day. So isometrics are also good for knee health. So now that I'm ready, I'm sweating, I feel good, I feel warm, uh, I feel prepared. Now I'm gonna just do a, uh, a one step approach, double leg jump and jump as high as I can. I usually aim for about 10 to 30 uh, jump attempts, taking about two minutes uh, rest after you know five to eight jumps, right? Because you wanna be able to explode as high as you can each jump, so that rest is really needed. You wanna go to about 25, 30. If you don't feel so good, you wanna dial it back down, maybe you know below 10 or around that 10 range. So here we go. There you go, that's why I can't have that happen. A few moments later. Now I'm gonna do some general strength stuff, mostly single leg work. So I'm gonna grab my 35 pound dumbbell. You can go heavy, but you don't really need to. I'm gonna use this chair uh, to tap on, so I'm not gonna go all the way down, just two thirds of the way. And I'm gonna do a single leg box squat, holding this weight in that goblet style position. So you don't want to sit on the chair, you want to just lightly tap it. I'm going to do this for three sets, six each side. So next one, I'm going to do a single leg hip hinge with the dumbbell, then I'm going to superset that with a plank pull through. So I'm doing three sets, six reps per leg, and then with the plank pull through, I'm doing three sets, but I'm gonna go for seven to eight reps per side. So here it goes. So tip with these is you wanna keep that dumbbell close to the shin. Next up is the plank pull through. I'm gonna get set in a push-up position. I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have this dumbbell 
just under my rib cage, right? I'm gonna get in the push-up position and I'm gonna get a little bit wider for more stability and all I'm doing is I'm dragging this weight to the other side. I'm gonna go seven, eight reps each side and focus on resisting that rotation just for this exercise. The last superset, I'm gonna do a uh, dumbbell ankle hop. So these are just 10 pounds each arm. And then I'm just gonna do an ankle hop with minimal knee bend. And I'm going for height for this one. I'm gonna do about 20 jumps. So I'm gonna superset that with a bent leg calf raise. Right, so it's gonna be the front leg, one, two, I'm gonna do about 10 reps each leg. And if you have a mini step or a weight plate to step on, that also helps. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, that was a great workout. I made it real easy to follow so you guys can do it too at home and it requires literally two pieces of equipment, a chair, and just a pair of dumbbells. And if you don't have a pair of dumbbells, not to worry, you can do that with, um, with two jugs of water, two weighted backpacks, or you can just do it without weights. It's also as effective. So if you guys got any questions, just you know, drop a comment down below. And um, until next time, Coach KP out.